doing okay. It's time for some action. Let's get started. It's time for Hot Topics. <laughs> Unsolicited comments. Get that man a prize by the end of the show. No, thank you, sir. Um, I didn't stay up to see Jimmy Fallon last night on account I had to be here this morning. But Cardi B is still making news. She was the co-host of The Tonight Show. By the way, that right there, that look of Cardi, I thought looks like Peppa from Salt and Pepper, right? Kind of, sort of, <laughs> right? Anyway, so um, she was there the whole show. She helped him deliver the, his monologue. Um, she sat behind the desk. She performed uh, Money Bag, The Roots in action. She's got the dancers. Good for, you know what? This is her time. Yeah. It is. So, and all while doing that, she's pregnant, so that's out of the closet. And she also had an interview with GQ magazine. So she says, she's talking about bad butt injections. See, this is what you've got to love about the transparency of Cardi B. You know, I, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> Ew. look, look, she said, she said um, um, four years ago, she went to a basement in Queens <gasps> where a woman injected her with silicone <gasps> for only $800. <laughs> Don't judge her, because there are people watching right now, you know who you are, who've either had that done or trying to figure out what's that address. Anyway, look, 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 but she, she had it done with no anesthesia. She goes on in GQ Magazine and says her butt was leaking for five days. But, excuse me, I'm sorry. My nose is leaking. Um, classy. <laughs> um, but you know, she, she loved the butt, she took the leak, and guess what? She went back to the same person for a touch-up. And it turns out the place was shut down because someone died. Isn't that something? Even though it leaked and even though it was silicone and even though four years ago, you know $800, you, you're not getting any, anybody's new booty for 800 bucks. <laughs> But she says that she wanted a bigger butt because her ex-boyfriend cheated on her with a girl with a bigger butt. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you don't want to woo him back. Like, why would you get what he wants? Kind of, sorta. Anyway, that was four years ago. And so she also says that the strippers make more money with bigger butts. Now that's a reason. I mean, if you're a stripper, then I guess that's a reason to get a bigger butt. Although, what about the men with fetishes for regular butts? I would imagine that goes on in the strip club too. You know, I wonder if this is the $800 booty. And I wonder if they're scarring from the leaks. Cause you know, to remove silicone is a hot mess. For those of you with silicone breast implants, that you know, they, they try to tell you, mine are saline. Um, <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm just making a point. You know, salt and water, saline under the muscle. But only because of the horror of silicone. Yes, you know, they, they swing a different way, but if you have them long enough, they eventually swing a different way. You know, <laughs> they, they look more natural anyway. But um, to remove silicone is like, um, I'll equate, it's like separating sand and salt. Oh. You, you, you're digging forever, there's really nothing that you can do. So, you know, watch your implants. Don't sleep on your belly. Oh. And, and um, and, uh, I, hey, Cardi, is this the $800 booty? Did you actually get the, the, the um, silicone removed? Hmm, I wonder. Anyway, she's winning today. Yay! Good for you. <laughs> I can't wait until next Sunday. So you know what next Sunday is? No. Yes, you do, part two. Yeah. My people, I don't even have to tell you what I'm talking about. Part two, uh, where Kim goes out there and none of the girls like Kim except for Sheree. 
But Sheree is not winning on the show right now. So anyway, so Kim Zolciak, everybody, is still mad with Marlon Wayans for making fun of her face in, in that in that picture that we showed you yesterday. We um, Marlon posted. Uh -huh. That's not touched up. That's an actual screen grab from the upcoming episodes where you know part two where Kim will be there. Excuse me. Um, classy. <laughs> I don't think you come here for class, do you? <laughs> you come here for fun. <laughs> All that money on charm school just out the window, mommy and daddy. Oh, I learned how to curtsy. I knew how to walk with a book on my head with ever so small heels. You know, charm school. You, you, they call it now finishing school. Do they, even, do they even have charm schools and finishing schools anymore for young ladies? How to use the proper fork and say yes and, well, I'm a product of charm school, honey. <laughs> Classy. Uh, so Marlon posted a picture, this picture right here of, um, of Kim uh, during the reunion. And he says, no, we're not in production on White Chicks 2. <laughs> well, and so, well, you know, Kim got, Kim got very upset about that. And she, comment, she uh, and her husband, um, ran into the, the paparazzi, and basically what Croy was saying is uh, he, need, he needs to grow up. All right, T TMZ caught the three of them. Just take a look at what Marlon says regarding Croy's comments. Husband, look, he's supposed to defend his wife, right? But uh, part of it is, I know part of him is like, dang, thank God, somebody said something. I've been trying to tell him. Damn surgery. Thank you, mom. He probably like, you know, that's messed up. Don't say that about my wife. No, he got it. I told her not to go in for the tenth time. The night was good enough. I think people have been saying stuff about. Kim and the fillers and you know whatever she's getting done for a long time. But uh, you know it's funny that Croy has seemingly no say so in how far she goes with uh, the, the fillers. I'm not saying that men are the boss of us, but at some particular point, you know, a man is gonna say, okay, look, the first lips, they were really nice. They feel really good when I kissed you. <laughs> but now you're going way too far. Now you got our 19 year old daughter involved. And, and, and just, anyway. Kim told TMZ um, what she thinks of, of uh, Marlon, that he's still out of line. So take a look at this. I think it's inappropriate that a grown ass man in this Me, Me Too movement is you know, knocking a woman. I think it's gross. Yeah, I just think it's disappointing to men in general. Be a man. Yeah, yeah. Be a man, you know? It's not being a man. Number one, by the way, obviously things are settled. She, she looked okay there, right? Just a little something, something. <laughs> um, what does this have to do with the Me Too movement, Kim? Okay. You're a housewife, and he's a comedian, and there was a funny screen grab. What are you saying, the Me Too movement? What does that mean? You can't say anything about women because the Me Too movement? You, you understand what I'm saying? Let it go, Kim, because he's stating the obvious. And I can't wait until next Sunday, like I'm saying, because those girls are going to let her have it. <laughs> Although Kim is a good reader backer. So we'll see how she defends herself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Bill Cosby got a surprise on the way to court yesterday. Have, have, have you seen this? OK. So there he is in Philadelphia. He's confronted by a topless protester. Take a look and then we'll talk. Never changes his spots. All right. A couple of things that I observed before we talk about this woman. Number one, where was the blind thing? 
you know, he clearly was checking, uh, like, who, who, who is that? And, uh, and then this woman right here, I guess, was disgusted by what was going on, maybe from uh, Bill's mouth. And so she walked ahead, if you notice. She left uh, the lawyer and Bill behind. Also, he's not relying on that cane. See, he's fooling you between blind, a cane, and 80-something years old. He's got, you fool. he's got me fooled. I mean, it, I still don't think he should do jail time. I, I, he, I think he's guilty of sin, but he's already been proven guilty in the court of public opinion. He could never go to Wawa for a 99-cent hot dog <laughs> without you seeing him and being like, ew. <laughs> guilty, guilty. You know what I mean? And sometimes the court of public opinion is better than jail time because you are ashamed. I mean, you know, when you're in jail, everybody's ashamed for something. But when you're walking out here on the streets, yeah, he's too old to go to jail. He's been shamed enough. His legacy is that of a groper. Just saying. All right, to the woman. Very nice, perky. She's 38 years old. I guess she doesn't have kids because normally by 38, some, a little something happens with your boobs. They swoop up. Her areolas are pink flesh color and her nipples work. A tasteful B plus C. All right, now moving on. Her name is Nicole Rochelle and she's 38 years old. And you know, she played Rudy Huxtable's friend on The Cosby Show in four episodes. Um, there she is coming in the door. Do you remember her? I don't, re I don't remember her. You do? A lot of people here do. That's interesting, because she was only there for four episodes, but she was on The Cosby Show. And so she recently went to uh, The Cosby household here in New York wearing the Hello Friends, uh, you know, Bill likes that Hello Friends thing. And she changed it to Hello Rapist. Oh. So anyway, so she's diving in the bushes and she's got the, the, the victims, uh, the alleged victims' names all you know, printed on her and, and women matter, women's lives matter. Yeah, you see it. Uh, his trial continues today. They took her, you see, here's the thing. We all feel he's guilty, don't you? Yes. All right, you know what? In, in this room, I'm gonna take a, a survey. Clap if you feel he's not guilty. Go ahead, say it like you mean it. Okay, all three of you. <laughs> See, in the court of public opinion, that would mean guilty, 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 you do jail time. Anyway, I believe he's guilty, but I also believe that um, outlandish moves like that woman did, Nichelle, with the boobs, they don't help the case at all, Michelle. That'd be like Janice Dickinson showing up in court in, you know, a unitard or whatever. Remember, we talked, Janice is one of the people who's supposed to be there in the courtroom. Janice uh, accused uh, Bill of, you know, doing stuff to her as well. But I don't, we don't want her showing up as Janice bombshell sex pot, you know, model. We want her showing up, you know, in a sensible, you know, St. John's knit <laughs> or something. You know, no red lipstick and very little makeup. You know, you gotta show your case. And sometimes that, anyway, so this woman, well, clearly she's got something going on with her. You know, she doesn't seem well. And she made a circus of, the, of something that didn't need to be made a circus. She didn't have to do that, girl. We already know he's guilty. Um, except for those three people. And we're gonna convince them before the end of the hour. Guilty. 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 <laughs> oh, so Brad Pitt has a new woman in his life. Oh, uh, well, well it, no, it's not you, but she is a regular woman, so you would have qualified. Yes, okay, well, okay, but she's super smart too. Okay, he's been spending time with this woman right here. And I've seen a lot of different pictures of her and she's got a little bit of a Jolie thing. She's a beautiful woman. See, there's the Jolie. You get what I'm saying? Nice, right guys? Well, guess what's even nicer? She is a professor at MIT. Yes. 
She's an acclaimed architect. Now, you know Brad loves architecture. He, she's an acclaimed architect. Her name is Nari Oxman. She's 42 years old and she's Israeli. See, this is where I think the Clooney effect kind of had an effect on him, you know, where, you know, enough with these starlets, George. Um, George probably told him, enough with the starlets. Now that you're divorcing, you need to get with a, a hot woman. Make sure she's hot, you know, but, but also a really well-read woman, somebody who is not, whose career is not competing with you or somebody who you can have, anyway, somebody who stays out of trouble. Anyway, you know, she was also previously married. She's 42, okay. She was previously married, no word on whether she has children, but she was married to a famous composer. Oh. So she likes people on her level. Oh. Oh. <laughs> really? Um, and and when, you, when, you think of, when you think about a Hollywood guy, you just don't think about somebody, you know, on the level of a composer while she's a professor at MIT. Reportedly, she is currently dating a billionaire. Although, right? Oh, he's good looking. Give the full body shot so we can see his body and stuff. He hasn't let himself go, right? Right? I don't know his name, but he's worth billions. And, and uh, so they were dating, but I suspect that they've now broken up. You know why? Because um, a billionaire or Brad Pitt, a billionaire or Brad Pitt. <laughs> the, thing, the thing with people who do so much studying and stuff is that they spend so much time in the classroom and so much time doing other things. And I always tell you, I feel like people are really enamored with being famous, no matter what they, they're enamored. The one thing that she doesn't have that Brad could give her that that billionaire can't is well, a position on Hot Topics, Aww. right? <laughs> You've arrived. Uh, you know, articles in People Magazine, you know, sometimes no matter how smart you are, the seduction of the microphone and the lights pulls a lot of people. And so, what do I think? Well, first of all, if she doesn't have kids, that's great, he's got enough for both of them. <laughs> no word on whether uh, Angelina is currently dating or not, I, I don't know. Um, but I'm glad that he's moved on with his life and I'm glad that he, oh, by the way, by the way. So he was spotted with a bunch of kids from her architecture class, which is another thing, right? Because nobody puts up with kids unless, unless there's a motive, like jumping in the panties or taking her, <laughs> or, or so, you, know, you know, taking uh, Nara for dinner or you know, that's his new girlfriend or something like that. Yeah, so he's been around MIT a whole lot. She's really pretty. And even though she's an architect and he's an architect, when the clock strikes midnight <laughs> and the wine is flowing, and Brad lights up his bud. <laughs> gives her a little contact. It's going down. Anyway, so we'll be following this uh, story. I say all that to say. Um, I do love that winter is almost over, but you gotta keep the soft skin going. Thanks to our friends at Gold Bond. This is the Gold Bond Ultimate Radiance Renewal, and I absolutely love it. It keeps, it keeps your skin soft and soft. Supple. It's a really good moisturizer. It has gentle exfoliants, and uh, your skin feels smooth and wonderful. And you don't have to keep washing your hands and putting more on because it stays. It, the ride stays with you like all day long. You know, one application. So thank you to our friends at Gold Bond. And guess what? You can try it yourself. Go to WendyShow.com for your chance to win a two-year supply of Gold Bond Ultimate Radiance Renewal. Right? Nice. So Carrie Underwood's got this new face that she was telling us, you know, when, remember a few months ago when she fell down the, the brick steps at her own home, which, you know, that's gotta hurt. There was blood every place. And so she's been, you know, shielding her face. She had to get something like 17 stitches. 
I don't know whether they were all 17 in the face or maybe she skinned the knee or what. You know, the details are still sketchy as to exactly what is going on with her face. But she did issue a statement at the time. She said, you probably won't even recognize me next time you see me. Well, this was recently taken and I recognize this half of her. That's Carrie Underwood. The side that she keeps blocking is the right side. She keeps blocking her right cheek. Well, I don't, I, I, maybe she's got like a buck 50 across there or something. I, 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 if you laughed, you're hood. Okay, okay. <laughs> Classy. Anyway. Uh, she'll she'll uh, be performing her new single at the Academy of Country Music Awards on Sunday. I won't be watching because I'll be part of two. <laughs> but I do want to know, Norman, exactly what time she performs. Okay. So that I can check out her face. Um, she posted um, a video of her rehearsing and we tried to open it up and zoom in and open and zoom. We couldn't. That's the best we could do. I don't see anything. It's her right side, so that would be the side that's facing us. I don't know. Anyway, can you watch, if you're not into two, then can you watch this and tell me what you see? <laughs> the AMAs air on this coming Sunday night at 8 o'clock on ABC. And today we've got more great show for you. Wow. Actress and author Vivica A. Fox is here, so grab a snack. She's also known for her role in Independence Day as well as Set It Off, and you know she's on Empire. Yeah. So she's got this new book. It's called Every Day I'm Hustling. It's available in stores now. Please welcome to our show our longtime friend, Vivica A. Fox. Yeah. Russian gray. I know, it's like so perfect no, for the day. It's I'm so talking about the color of your hair like the kids do it when they're in their 20s. Oh. Now we're there. Yes. You, oh, you're talking about my ombre. Yes. Yes. You know what? I know. But no, that, that's brave, that's good. You know, I always said that, you know, when I get older, I think I want to play with, I'm um, older though, older than us. You know, we're both 53. But when I get older, I do want to wear, I think, gray wigs. Yes. You know, like wild oh, honey, my hair has been about five different colors in the last two weeks, from blue to, to blonde. Right, that's why I have a hair collection, because we can do that, right? <laughs> yeah, so today we were filming the ombre. Love it. Yes. Let's give you some shoe cam, put your feet oh, on sure, those baby. Feet, and twist them. So, I remember the first time that you were on our talk show, and yes, you left uh, something in my head, because I, being the same age, and I wasn't going through menopause, mm. but you said, yes, I'm having my own private summers, but that was, Vivica, that was like eight years ago. Yes, absolutely. And they tell me that you're still going through it. Yes, and it's something that I just decided to share with everyone and to get in front of. Yes. Because I've had amazing, amazing resurgence in my career, and no one had any idea that that was what I was going through, but I'm a grown woman, and I'm still me. Yeah. You know? no, but I, and I just decided to get in front of it. Let everyone know that, you know, when, when, when this happens, it not only happens physically, it's also mentally. Right. Do you know as well? Uh -huh. So that you don't feel bad about yourself. You just say, hey, baby, where's my fan at? Yeah. And right now, I'm excuse myself. I'm there and now. And made me, okay, uh -huh. right. You, oh, you need the fan? You can, no, oh, oh, look I'm at freezing. you. Are you heating up? No, I'm freezing. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, that's cold. Oh. I was like, but, wow, girl. But, um, <laughs> but you kick the covers at night and all that other kind of stuff. Yes, and I just, you Oy. know, it's part of life. Yes, it you is. You know, you're blessed, honey. You'll be a lot um, older, longer than what you're younger. And you no longer need to worry about whether you're going to have a baby. Oh! I mean, <laughs> you know, we've all been there that rushed to the, to the drugstore because we got with the wrong guy. Like, oh. oh, please. Oh, come on, we've lived. Yes, we have. You know? That's right, we have lived. I love being on this side because we, it, most of us, or a lot of us, are really, really free to talk. Just let it all hang out. Talk about it. Yeah. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. That was the reason why I decided to do the book. Yeah, so, all 
right, you've been around for so long, Viv. I yes, could have sworn that you've had a book out already. No, this is actually my first oh, book. Wait. And hopefully oh of more to come, to be very honest with you. Sorry, I didn't Right, you didn't realize you were holding it. Yes, those. yes, we, that's right. what I do during commercials. I have my hand warmers. That's all right. And during interviews, I put them under my booty. <laughs> I'm sorry. God. It's okay, I forgive you. Tell me but about yes, this book. Every Day I'm Hustling is a 19 lesson, five part series, where basically, you know, I understand, like I said, being in my 50s, what it's like to maintain success, what it's like to go through new chapters. Mm -hmm. And so basically we decided to do a motivational memoir because when my publicist, BJ, who thought about doing this, I was like, wow, you're gonna give me another job? If BJ I'm not and busy enough, together forever. forever. And he said, Vivica, you have to share with people and make it a motivational memoir. But besides that, I've got recipes in there for my sister's hot water cornbread, uh -huh. <laughs> black eyed peas and all that. Well, my, my favorite playlist. It's good that you know how to cook because my thing is that you I don't, don't have to be a- I my sister does. <laughs> I was about to share with you. It, my opinion is every woman needs to know how to cook at least five things well. You don't have to be a gourmet cook, but five things, you don't, cook. Really? No. Well, you have money though, so I guess you call in. Well, and I do live by myself, so it's just like, you know. Yeah, why well, bother? I just go and have me a quick salad or something really quick, so. But no, I'm not a big cook. I can cook, Yes. but I'm not a big well, cook. Well, there you are, you can cook. Yes. Oh, gosh. <laughs> All right, one of the things in the book yes. is a full chapter dedicated to 50 Cent. Mm -hmm. 14 years later, Vivica, are we still dealing with this? Uh, um, Last year, there was definitely some misconceptions that were out about our relationship. And at the time, I was writing the book, and it was before we made peace. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to clarify. What were the misconceptions? Every, Refresh me. Oh, uh, misconceptions, sexually, things that happened. So we just made sure that we let everybody know why it's went on for such a long time. I did not write this book to get into another few with him. We're good. And we always will be good. Did he say you're whack in bed? Huh? Did he say you're whack in bed? Oh, oh absolutely not. <laughs> because, because. And nor, and nor did I say that about him. No, you didn't say that. No, no, I did not say that about him. You didn't say that, that, she's whack, that he's whack in bed, but no. you did a lot of implications. Like, no, I did not, Wendy. In here you say that you no, usually have to initiate No, I did not, sex. Wendy. No, I did not. They said it's PG-13 compared to what he was saying at the time. Oh. Clarity, right? Yeah. And. And when it was time for that PG-13 sex, you did most of the initiating. Yes, I was very attracted to him, still am. Yes. <laughs> Own it. See, that's what a grown woman does. Yes. She owns it. Own it, yes. Would you get back together with him? Uh, we would start as friends. We could start as friends, and who knows? <laughs> yes. Wait. Never did... say never. No. Never say never. Well, I'm sure that behind the scenes, there was something very, very soft and compassionate. I mean, you're a woman of a particular age, you're older than him. Yes. You know, a woman of a particular age and season, there's something about him that made you... He was a gentleman, he was a rock star were you, gentleman. Were, were you in love? I was very much in love with him. Was he in love with you? Very much. I mean, I think that the reason why it's haunted me for such a long time is you're, I found out later that he wanted to propose to me. So that's why... Right, okay, yeah. okay, okay. So, um, I'll set the stage. They were in Monte Carlo. 50's got the ring in his pocket. No. That's... No, th that's he was going to have a theater because I was excluded in the international tour of Kill Bill. So he wanted to rent a movie theater. And see, that moment right there. Aww. That's how I felt when I found out, too. That's cute. Yeah, so that's why for so long, I think it's haunted me that I always felt like... Gosh, if I could have just done better, I didn't know. And that's what I share for so other did, ladies. But that sometimes have, we have, have to learn ring? not to do too much. Did he and let the ring? man be the man. Yes. Right? Yeah. You do learn that. But it's also not giving up us being strong as women. Right. You know. Um, did he have the ring? That I, was I didn't know, sweetheart. I, did, I found out after the fact, and then he wrote a song about it, talking about I split the ring in half and he had six carrots each year, on each ear, so I found out it was 12 carrots and I'd like a person that's gonna come with the ice skating ring for the hand, you right? know what I'm saying? You know right. about that. Right, okay. yeah. Nothing wrong with skating. Baby. So, <laughs> and, and, and would you have said yes? Of course, I loved him. Oh. Yeah. So when you, when you ran into him at the Knicks game, yes. you were sitting apart from each other, yes. and it's alleged that you were the one who went over to him mm -hmm. and said, um, kind of like... It was time to squash the beef. Right, right. 
And what was his reaction to you there? He smiled. I think he was happy that I came over. I mean, he knows me. I ain't new to this. I'm true to it. Did he? <laughs> okay. Did he ask you for dinner? Did you have a dinner after that? No, no. The lot, well, we worked together uh, last year on This Is 50, and I, um, I did that, you know, just because, look, I think he and I, no, I know. Damn. He and I, we make good business together. Damn. And so, you know, make it do what it do. But, you know, he's more mature now, even though he might act the way he acts on his, um, you know, Instagram or whatever. Mm -hmm. it, 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 we're all more mature now in terms of the situation. Uh, you know what? I think that this might be able to work the second time around if, if he could just put stuff aside. If he could just put stuff aside. We shall see. Never say never. Yeah, but if you don't... I think you're actually kind of wishing for it, even though last time you told me I need to do a little international dating, so... Well, yeah, I wanted yeah. to see more for you. I, I like the idea of going international, meeting a count, a man with billions of dollars. <laughs> you, you, you understand what I'm yes, saying? Yes, I do, love. Meghan Markle, that situation. Yes, hey, scored her okay. a, a prince, right. All right. Yes. So now, um, by the way, I didn't see any pictures of you at Star Jones's wedding. Are you? Because I wasn't there. I was working. Oh. Unfortunately, but I saw her actually at Tina Knowles event, the wearable art, and I saw her and I wished her well. Yeah. But yeah, no, I was uh, producing another film and I was unable to go. But congratulations, Star. Got you another one, girl. Uh -huh. Got you another one. Yeah. I did another husband. Yeah. She got another ring oh. and, and happiness, a second chance at happiness. Yes. She deserves that. And she's also an automatic stepmom. Oh, uh, okay. He's, he, <laughs> he, he's got uh, like a daughter or something. Maybe they're not as friendly as we thought. <laughs> oh. No, no, no. I just, I, I, yeah. Okay. I have five godchildren, so I'm good. She's happy, baby. Okay. I yeah. get it. I get it. Yes. Okay. So we saw um, Portia in the play, yes. uh, two can play that, that, game. Th that game. The stage play. It was the stage play. Yes. You were there. Um, Kenya seemed to feel like you were uh, spitting out the same lines that you did 20. She said something really slick about Vivica. Yeah. Spitting out the same lines that she did 20 years ago, blah, 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 so on and so forth. And remember, they did not get, get along when you were on Celebrity Apprentice. Mm. What's the origin of that? Desperate times call for desperate measures, in my honest opinion. <laughs> She's just, she was sitting there watching me work. Yeah. I mean, what, what are you gonna do? Probably jealous that Portia was in a play with Vivek Fox. Yes, And yeah. has more than just um, the housewives. You know, she does that Dish Nation and other stuff. Yes, you Portia's know. very talented and so sweet and so supportive. Yeah. But, you know, sweetheart, listen, at first I put out like a couple things that I, I honestly felt, like I'm putting out a motivational memoir and it was like I almost got sucked into that cattiness again. Right, right, right. And, and, and I deleted it. Right, right, right. You know, because how yeah. can I, you know, if you're going to walk the walk, talk the talk. Uh -huh. So I made sure. How is your love life now? Yeah. Are you gay happily single? single? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, just because you're single doesn't mean that you're not getting it in and dating and, and you know. You having maintenance? Being squired. Yes. 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 You got your maintenance, man. Ma well, oh, okay. <laughs> everybody, you know, but, you know, to be honest with you, I'm very happy, you know, where I'm at with my godchildren and my book. I got enough going on with that. But yeah, we're all right. Okay. Yeah. Vivica A. Fox, everybody. Her new book is called Every Day I'm Hustling. It's in stores now. Everyone in the studio audience, you got your copy? Yeah. Up next, we're in the kitchen with Dr. Mike Dow. Don't go far. to go down. Our next guest is an author and a sex doctor. He, he's been here before to help me out with Ask Wendy. And today he's here to show us some recipes to boost your mood. Yes. And so this is Dr. Mike Dow. My, hi. Hi, honey. Nice to see you. I just wanted How you to doing? jump right into it. Because I don't see oysters in the usual stuff. Yes, we got some new stuff. It's all from my book, Heal Your Drain Brain. Because listen, it's not just the bachelors I treat on TV who need some help, right? We all need to relieve stress naturally, right? Because you see your ex on Instagram, they're looking great, and that's stressing you out. And it's not just Xanax that works. So I, I have some, right? 
Am okay. I right? So foods, there are natural strategies in my book, and I brought some recipes from my book today. So this is not that are gonna sexual relieve. mood. This no. is your, lift well, your spirits. Lift your spirits, but okay. I'm going to actually start with one that is going to put you in the mood. So walnut, meatless, walnut meatballs for romance. So this is how I'm okay. going to, yes, so the audience likes it. So this is how you're going to make it. What is your doctor in, doctor? So I, got, I have two doctors. So I, have a, I have my sex doctor doctor. So uh -huh. I have, a, I have a, a PhD in sexology. Keep going the same time. Uh -huh. So and I have a, a doctorate in psychology. Mm -hmm. So I'm all about the brain chemicals, right? So, so we have the, the walnuts. Come in? Uh, so the walnuts and the oil. These are, this is going to release dopamine in the brain, right? Uh, and that is that chemical Wait, I remember desire, years ago you right? did have a cooking show. Uh, I did, Freaky Eaters on TLC. Yep. Okay. Yep. So this is going to release dopamine. So you just give that a little a little pulse, and, and then and guess dopamine what? dopamine does what? It releases desire, makes you feel sexy, right? So then you, you can use a Vitamix or a Blendtec. And look at this. This is just meatless walnuts, and then you just make this into a meatball and over, instead of pasta, because who feels sexy with 3,000 calories of, you know, spaghetti meatballs? This is over chickpea pasta. This is like 600 calories. This is great to, you know, put you in the mood for a date. I had a big breakfast. You don't mind if I uh, tap out, no, do you? No, 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 not at all. Okay. <laughs> not at all. So, so, so anxiety <laughs> over here. Damn. So, you didn't cook these? Uh, uh, yeah, I cooked these. This is raw? Yeah, it's raw. Walnuts. Good, right? Oh, this is good. So, so over here for oh, anxiety, yeah, it's good, right? You take that. So over here, and if, you, warm. if you have anxiety, I'm gonna make a fantastic chickpea oh my salad. Gosh, this is good. So if you if you have anxiety, you need more serotonin, kefir, honey. This makes serotonin mm. in your gut. So I'm gonna make this fantastic little dressing. I'm gonna put it on this. I'm just gonna put it like this. Uh huh. You know. A little toss, yummy, yummy, yummy. This all makes serotonin in your gut. That kefir, instead of taking those, I'm gonna feel so zen. It's good, right, those walnuts? This is good. Is that delicious? You can heat that up, the walnuts, I, the chickpeas. I, yeah. This is very good. Yeah. So this probiotics, on. delicious, a fantastic way to uh, get that uh, anxiety, that stress relief. So for energy, I have I've cauliflower so popcorn. But I only like them squished. Yeah. I don't like them with the poop on anymore. So what is know, this? So this is cauliflower popcorn. So energy, I want you to think of vitamin B12, right? So everyone, you know, that those energy drinks, they have a lot of vitamin B12. A lot of people who don't eat meat, they actually get vitamin B12 deficient. So this is, this is uh, what you want to use. You want to use nutritional yeast. This is a natural form of vitamin B12. So you just put cauliflower flour, the nutritional yeast, olive oil, Wait, salt, so and all you do, you, you give the sauce, I, I, I like to use my hands, you put this in the oven for 20 minutes, the nutritional yeast, you know like um, Pirate's Booty and the cheese? Yeah. You put this in the oven for 20 minutes, and it's so, oh my god, it's so good. Because we've all had mm. uh, cauliflower in the oven for dipping and stuff like that, but mm -hmm. yeast. Mm -hmm. B12, for people who don't eat enough meat, they get deficient in vitamin B12, yep. energy all day. Mm -hmm. And then finally, for insomnia, this is my own personal recipe. Okay. So this is gonna give you, this is my bedtime latte. It's sort of like tea, but better at night. Okay. So the saffron in it is gonna boost your melatonin, gonna boost your serotonin, and then check this out. The turmeric and the black pepper, this basically cleans your brain at night. It actually Everybody talks about turmeric being yeah, so lovely. It's the best. It's it really not bad. It's good, right? It prevents the plaques from forming in your brain at night. So, Wendy, it literally cleans your brain while you're sleeping. And it helps you to sleep. Cinnamon, it's fantastic. They're all in my new book, Heal Your Drain Brain. Less stress hormones, more feel good, stress relieving neurotransmitters. It's fantastic. Get into it, everybody. Yeah. Dr. Dow, thank you so much for coming by. Thank you, Wendy. Um, for more information on his book, it's called Heal Your Drain Brain. Go to wendyshow.com. We'll be right back.